today on What's Next. I don't have a chapter at the end of the book that says, guess what? I'm so recovered. I'm there. I don't want to sound corny like the Nike ad, but just do it and it gets easier. Downsizing is not throwing things away. Believe it or not, it's sharing. Hello and welcome back to What's Next. I'm Mark Middleton and today we're talking about getting from here to there, about finding our way forward when faced with the never ending challenges of life, uh, challenges to our health, our work life, our family life, and our social life. It is trite but true. The only constant is change and the only way forward is through. We navigate change one step at a time. So let's bring in some fancy steppers. When it comes to change, they are light on their feet. They know how to get those toes a tapping. Cecily Wilson, Bill Schaefer, and Amy Sweezy. And Amy, so often it does seem like one person's struggle ends up being a blessing for others because they then share their struggle. And, and more importantly, uh, they help destigmatize it. You've got a story today uh, about a woman who's been fighting a very personal battle for decades. Tell us about her. Yeah, that's right. So let me ask, what do you think of when you hear the words anorexia nervosa? Maybe you have an image of a super thin teenage girl, but adults can actually develop the disease as well. And without the intervention of parents, suffering from anorexia as an adult can create additional challenges and deadly consequences. As a child, Diane Corso displayed obsessive compulsive behavior, but it wasn't until she was finished with college and working as a teacher that Diane's OCD became dangerous. She became obsessed with exercise and she developed anorexia. After battling it for more than 30 years, she wants people to understand the disease more. Anorexia and eating disorders are the deadliest mental illness out there and no one really talks about it in that way. My disordered eating didn't develop until my 20s, and I'm far beyond my 20s now, and I still struggle. So if it were just easy enough to be physically changed, it would have been by now, and it's not. That's why Diane stresses that the worst advice you can give an anorexic is just eat something. Well, if it, if it were e as easy to eat, don't you think we would? <laughs> If it were so easy to pick up that burger, we would do it. It is the thoughts and the voices that you hear in your head um, are so much louder than the healthy voice. Diane struggled with her disease through several miscarriages and eventually through a turbulent pregnancy, which required hospitalization and nutrition through a feeding tube. Against all odds, she had triplet boys. It was her commitment to being a good mom that drove Diane to therapy, which encouraged her to journal about her battle. Eventually, her journal entries became a book titled The Uncomfortable Truth, where Diane shares her life as a work in progress. This is a disease. This is mental. This is not physical. It looks physical, and that's the treatable part. It's the mental that needs to stick. Diane hopes sharing her story helps educate others and provides support to those who struggle with eating disorders. Like so many others living with an addiction, Diane's story is a day-to-day, moment-to-moment battle. I don't have a chapter at the end of the book that says, guess what? I'm so recovered. I'm there. And that's probably what kept me from doing it for a while because I didn't have that bow at the end, you know, tied up at the end and I just kept being encouraged, it's okay. You're a work in progress and you need to admit it and you need to move on. And that's what I'm doing. And I'll continue to make steps that make me feel more comfortable little by little. But I'll be damned if I'm going to stop trying. I think that at the beginning, I thought that I had to be an all or nothing because that is also my personality, all or nothing. So if I couldn't fully recover and fully give up the habits, then I might as well stay in the habits. Now I know that if I tweak the habits and I try and skirt around some things and trick the disorder, that's good for now. That's, ha that's working for me. So I'm not like 100%. I'm better than I was. And I've got a lot to be happy and pleased with myself about. I'm proud. Diane told me that the book that she wrote is the book that she had actually been looking for. Someone her age, not yet fully recovered and still battling the disease, but she couldn't find that book. 
So guys, let me ask you, whether it's addiction, a health battle, or some other challenge, do you think that we actually do a disservice if we only focus on the stories of complete victories, right? Nicely tied up in a bow, as Diane yeah. said. Do you think it's important that we hear more from those folks who are still in it, right? They're in the thick of it, to try to encourage them to share their stories. And I love that because I, I really feel that when you are more vulnerable, then you allow others to see themselves in you and recognize that, oh, I'm really not alone. There are others that are just like me. The stories may not be identical, but there's some paths of similarity along the way. But again, giving them all the strength to know that I can see this happening. She's at the end of the tunnel and I can get there too. But I think as a society, we kind of label it as a, a, a teen's issue. But then if you're older and you have it, you start feeling maybe I, I, there's something wrong with me. I should be over this by now. I, I should be able to deal with this. So these things happen to people of all ages. And don't be a, a, ashamed, afraid, or, 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 or at all to get the help you need because we can get over all these things. And then I look at myself in the mirror and say, who is that old man? But I feel really good. Every moment is once in a lifetime. I love that. But when we can't be together, it's hard to share those moments. That was before I found an easy way for mom to connect with us. Oh, the memories. Their first date, to summers at the lake, to ball games, to birthdays. It's all shared with her grandpad. And that brings me happy tears. Mom, were your ears burning? Oh, you know they were. Did you get the pictures that Shelby sent you? I did, and I felt like I was right there with you. Life is about transitions, and there is an art and a science to navigating them. They're about shedding what matters least so we can focus on what matters most. And that's why Growing Boulder is thrilled to partner with Caring Transitions, the nation's most trusted total solutions provider for seniors in these times. Whether it's home cleanouts, downsizing, relocation, estate sales, and so much more, one call handles it all. To get started with a free consultation, visit caringtransitions.com. Welcome back to What's Next. That's a great question, isn't it? Ha have you thought about what's next in your life? Things you want to do, things you know you should do? It's always toughest just to get started. You look around, you see other people doing it, going on trips, getting in shape. Sure helps to realize that somewhere along the line, they just had to get started too. Just like a guy Mark Middleton met at a track shack running event. A guy competing in the growing boulder division. He's run all over the world. Berlin, Paris, New York, Chicago, Reykjavik, London, and Tokyo. Today, 72-year-old Neil Ader is running close to home in the historic Winter Park 10K. Considering his world-ranked running resume, it's easy to assume, incorrectly, that he's been a runner all his life. I started running when I turned 59. I started walking. Then I did walk, run, and run, walk, and then my daughter talked me into doing the, uh, the Gasparilla Half Marathon in February of that year, so I ran that. And then another person, my other daughter, talked me into doing the Disney Marathon, and then after that I was hooked. My one daughter is the coach at Trinity Prep, head coach of the uh, cross-country team, and I'm the assistant cross-country coach. And she runs every day, and my other daughter um, is uh, doing Boston with me in three weeks. It'll be the fifth time I've done Boston with her and I, I've done Boston with Sarah as well. So yes, uh, it's, it's part of our family. Running not only became an important part of his life, it changed his life. I dropped 40 pounds. My blood pressure's down uh, by 20 points and my pulse rate's down 20 points. So I feel really good. And then I look at myself in the mirror and say, who is that old man? But I feel really good. And again, I, I'm, I'm fortunate to be in the shape I'm in. Neil has had two great love affairs in his life. He and his wife, Pam, have been together since childhood. And he and the road have been together for the past 12 years. Falling in love with Pam was easy. The road took a little while longer. What do you say to people that get out there and try it one time and say, it's not for me? I, I don't want to sound corny like the Nike ad, but just do it. Just if you need to walk, walk, just walk, run, and it gets easier. Each week it gets easier. If you, if you stay with it, 
anybody can do this. 72 years old, you just ran a 10K, uh, you won your division, you had a great time. Life is good? Life is good, yes, life is good. I'm, I'm fortunate. I'm fortunate to be able to do this at my age, so I, I feel good about that. I appreciate it every day. He appreciates it every day because he does it every day. It's what I do. I do it every day. It's what I do. Mark, thank you for finding him and telling that story. What did you take away from his experience? You know, Bill, to me, the, the nugget was what he said at the very end, uh, quote, it's just what I do. I, I do it every day. And, and we hear this all the time. It really is our, our routines, our daily habits that either make us or break us. And, and most of us, uh, myself included, devote too much time making what people call recurrent decisions. Should I exercise today? Should I meditate today? We have to eliminate the daily should I's. If you need to do something, folks, if you want to do something, you just need to make a one-time decision and then be done with it. What about you guys? Uh, uh, is there something that you have thought about doing? I, I want to do yoga, but I'm not a bendy kind of a guy, and I've started it a hundred times and maybe done it once. I, I just saw you can't. with your leg over your head back there in the newsroom. <laughs> <laughs> and I popped the hernia again. So I'm going to be on the shelf for another 13 weeks. I, I just cannot, like Mark, that's such a great point. You make the decision once and, it's, and be done with it. Just start doing it. I think that's the challenge. There's plenty of reasons not to try something, but we can't let aging, we can't let getting older be one of those reasons. So let's get to today's Bold Social because Dr. Amanda Hansen, who is a clinical psychologist and also a female empowerment coach says the goal is to see aging as a sacred act, as some sort of spiritual journey that you can't blow. We were meant to age. It is one of the most holy and most sacred rites of passage. So I won't mute it. I won't cover it up. I won't freeze myself in time because every morning when I get to meet myself in the mirror, I get to have that moment, that pause, that reflection of my humanity. For me, aging is not something to be afraid of. If we allow ourselves to see aging as a holy act, as a sacred travel and journey, oh my gosh, the potential and what is possible. Can I pass heirlooms along with the story rather than just leaving them behind? We're not made to withdraw from life. We're made to seize each moment and to value every breath. We're made to be bold, to take risks, and pursue our passions. Don't identify with limitation. Embrace possibility. Stop growing older. Start growing bolder. Find your what's next at growingbolder.com. Welcome back to What's Next. Uh, and you know, folks, what's next for all of us uh, are transitions. They're a part of life. Uh, and no matter what stage we're in, navigating transitions can be pretty darn hard. Uh, you know, maybe you're an empty nester preparing to move to a smaller home. Maybe you're just wanting to reclaim the space that you have now. Whatever the case, it might be time for downsizing. Uh, it does sound intimidating. Uh, it can sound like more of an obligation, something that we have to do. Uh, but we recently talked with Kerry Coombs, who is a senior strategic advisor at Caring Transitions, which is the nation's leading solutions provider when it comes to downsizing and relocating, home cleanouts, and really anything that has to do with a life transition. She says there are many real benefits to downsizing. Downsizing is not throwing things away. Believe it or not, it's sharing. Downsizing is the experience that one says, do I still need, want all of this? Can I share some of this with people in my family? Can I pass heirlooms along with the story rather than just leaving them behind? Pick up that item that maybe has been collecting dust on a table or a cabinet and handing it off to somebody in your family and giving them that background, the story of how it came to be why it's so important for them to cherish that memory with you and walk that journey together. That is downsizing. I think when we're younger, you know, it's all about more, more, more. You know, you want, you want, you want a bigger job, you yeah. want more money, you want more stuff, you want a bigger home. But at some point, we, we, we do 
begin to realize that less is more. Uh, talk a little bit about how your life can actually be expanded by downsizing. I walk into rooms sometimes not actually able to find what I need and it, and it, it does cause me a moment of, of stress. And I have to say, going through my own downsizing, the kids grew up and now they're adults. And I had great fun putting together boxes of items that they had showered me with gifts along the years. I had the macaroni necklaces. I had the art from third grade. I had the ribbons and the trophies and the events and the photos. And I had so much fun getting out tubs and color coordinating the tubs and this is hers and this is his and we had the memory fun evening and then it all magically disappeared from <laughs> my house right and i walked into rooms and there were my things the things that i was looking for the things that i wanted and it wasn't cluttered it was easily accessible it wasn't um, kind of a, a concern about my reaching for something on a shelf and, and having too much of something. I would say that the purpose life that we now live, downsized ourselves, gives me not only peace of mind, but I know that the things that I once had in storage are being appreciated by family and friends. Downsizing is sharing. I never quite heard it uh, explained like that, uh, you know, but I like it. I love the idea of tossing out old beliefs and physical clutter. In fact, I recently reorganized our office kitchen cabinets and mistakenly tossed out a coworker's old mug, threw it into the trash. I was sharing it with the trash. Uh, I thought she'd forgiven me, but uh, turns out she hasn't because she is a producer of this program and she put the words that I just said into my script, so I'm guessing she has not. Uh, she's not living up to the slogan on her old coffee mug, guys. Life is good. Um, so, so what about you? Where in your home or in your life do you think you could downsize or want to downsize? Amy, how about it? Well, Mark, I still have a mug from 2004 that you brought me from the Olympics when you went right. in Greece uh, way back when. So I still have it. I have not thrown it away, just to be clear. Uh, but yeah, physical clutter is a big one for me. I still have three kids that are all living at home, teenagers, and so their stuff and our stuff and my stuff, it's a lot of stuff. And uh, I really love that idea of the sharing instead of feeling like you're throwing things in the garbage. Yeah. I need to embrace that. Well, I'd just like to point out that nobody has ever given me a mug. And second of all, I would love to downsize my ego, but let's be realistic and talk about things I can actually accomplish. If you open my garage, there's no cars in my garage. It's full of hockey equipment and music gear. I got enough hockey equipment to, to, for, for two teams. Come and get, take the stuff, take anything you want. For the music equipment, I got amps, I got speakers. Springsteen, call me, pal. <laughs> I was laughing because I literally knew that this story was for me. I have a storage unit that has all of my home and household goods from my divorce still there from seven years ago. Right? And there's just so much that I want to share, but I really can't seem to part with it. So I need some help. My name is Cecily. <laughs> and you're a hoarder. I am a <laughs> You're likely to be faced with helping a loved one through a life transition, and Caring Transitions can partner with you during this time. We offer a customized approach to each individual for downsizing, home cleanouts, estate sales, online auctions, and more. With more than 280 locations nationwide, our experts are here to provide compassionate care and help you manage it all. Learn more with a free consultation at CaringTransitions.com. Every moment is once in a lifetime. I love that. But when we can't be together, it's hard to share those moments. That was before I found an easy way for mom to connect with us. Oh, the memories. Their first date, to summers at the lake, to ball games, to birthdays. It's all shared with her grandpa. And that brings me happy tears. Mom, were your ears burning? Oh, you know they were. Did you get the pictures that Shelby sent you? I did, and I felt like I was right there with you. 
All right, welcome back to What's Next. I'm Cecily Wilson, and I'm wondering, are you following us on our social media channels, TikTok, Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook? It's a way for you to engage with us as we ask weekly questions to get your take, like this one. What's something you've been wanting to do to learn or try, and what small step can you take towards making it happen today? For me, it's this. I want to do snorkeling. Now, I guess the step that I need to do <laughs> is to learn how to swim. <laughs> so that might help a little bit, but I really want to do it. I want to go under <laughs> water and just learn how to swim like a fish. That was so silly, but that's literally what I want to do. Do that again, Sess. It looks like you got it down. I think you're good, girl. You're there. <laughs> right. I got one this will surprise you all, but I'm not a dancer. Don't know how to do it. Terrible at what? it. What? Two left feet. The thing I want to do is get over the fear of looking like an idiot. You know, the fear of failure that keeps you from taking that. You know, you talk about small steps. That's all I got, small steps. Start with TikTok. <laughs> Listen, I have so many things on my list of things I want to do that I haven't done that I need to start. But after this program today, I think top on my list is downsizing. I need to start getting rid of some of my physical clutter. So that's mine. I've got one quick tip for Cecily. Uh, and Cecily, if you are swimming underwater, you don't open your mouth oh. and, and do that. Keep the mouth closed if you're underwater. Right, that might help, that might help. <laughs> But for me, you know, I, I think the good news is I am endlessly curious. I'm easily excited. But the bad news is, is it leads to squirrel brain. I mean, I allow myself to constantly be interrupted by my own thoughts and I need to make time uh, and, and learn how to just be. Uh, and I don't do that. So I'm going to work on that. But, you know, folks, whatever it is that you want to do, or whatever it is you want to overcome, the key, as we've learned today, is to just get started because it's impossible to know exactly where the path is going to lead. And, you know, just like Diane Corso, simply trying to help yourself might end up becoming a path to help others. And, and like Neil Ader, simply getting off the couch can actually lead to the Boston Marathon. We are all constantly changing. And it's important to ask ourselves from time to time what we want more of and what we should be letting go of, whether it's emotional baggage or maybe just an old coffee mug. Uh, what's next can be a big vision, but whatever it is, it always starts the same way. And that's a decision to take that first step, that first little step. And the time to take it is always today. We'll see you next time.